All right, so a lot of people have been weighing in on the Niji Sanji situation, as we know. It's been the big talk for two weeks now. And now we've gotten to the point where we actually have some lawyers weighing in, a corporate lawyer in this situation named Legal Mindset. So I've been watching uh, parts of his streams. He had one yesterday and one today. They're very long streams. They're like seven or eight hours a piece. So it's kind of hard to, to digest them all at once at this point. It's only been, you know, almost as many hours as he has streamed, but he has been reviewing the Niji Sanji situation, reviewing all of the available public documents and statements made by Niji Sanji and Doki Bird and various Niji Sanji Ian livers and has given his opinion. And uh, as someone who is a impartial, uninterested party, someone who doesn't have a stake in any of this and really didn't know about anyone involved until reviewing everything, this is a pretty objective opinion and he is not siding with Niji Sanji. It doesn't look very good. He, he's been ripping them apart for the last 24 hours or so. And I found... Now, this is his channel if you want to check it out. But there is a channel here that collected some clips from that very long stream. I have not watched any of these yet. I'm sure I've seen some of these clips, but we're going to go in blind together. And we're going to enjoy this and check out what a real lawyer, a corporate lawyer has to say about the Niji Sanji situation. He's new to VTubers, yeah, he did say that. I mean, he's completely new to all this. So that's why it's it's refreshing to see, and he's had a great a great attitude. I joined his first live stream, and the first thing I heard is a group of dragoons is a nesticle. I remember I, I was watching part of today's, and he was like talking about, he's like, as a recently uh, developed nesticle, yeah, you know, maybe nesticle didn't win, the actual uh, community fan name for Doki Bird, but it's still going to be the unofficial one, that's for sure. Interesting to hear his analysis, uh, assuming he has info that nobody else has. I don't think he has any info that anyone in the public doesn't have, but he has his own experience, and he's able to give some pretty good insight on this stuff, so it won in our hearts, exactly. Yo, Rigid Rat, welcome back, dude. Hope you're doing well. Are these eggs poached? It's whatever you want them to be. That's right. Yo, what's up, Featherstone? All right, I think, uh, let me pause the music and we'll start listening. This clip's about, uh, this video's about 13 minutes. Pretty much that's gonna be it for today. We're gonna, we're gonna watch this video, hang out for a little bit, cheer on the downfall of uh, Niji Sanji a little bit more, and that's about it. And then I'm gonna make my video live, and then I'm gonna get a shower and get this gamer gunk off of me, and then go socialize. Ish. I have to see people today. Jeez Louise. It's gonna be crazy. Yo, what's up, Frankie? Hi, Rev. I was part of the seven hour stream, but not the five and a half hour one. That was a, uh, that's a long stream. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, socializing is tough, guys. All right. I must say something very controversial in the negligible economy. The letter H looks like a chair. That's a very bold thing to say. I, I, I appreciate your courage. And welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Ruby as well. Rev's going to be social and touch grass. I know. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yo, Cirrus, welcome back. Hello. And Photon, how's it going? All right, guys. I think it's time. And thank you guys for the hype train, too. I think it's time to start. But before we start, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, um, <clears throat> bring it in close. If you're a follower of the stream, please spam that egg follower emotes. If you're a subscriber, spam that animated rev egg emotes. And if you're not any of those things, consider it a follow. Consider a sub. It's all worth it. It's all worth this moment. See? Fallen hero. Thank you for the tier one. You have access. You have access to the tools now. Thank you very much for that tier one, Fallen Hero. Yeah, that's right. Look at those eggs. Look at those eggs go. ASMR. I got to give you guys at least one ASMR. Actually, uh, Legal Mindset was doing some ASMR when I was tuning into his live stream today. That was, that was funny. That was a funny moment. Oh, yeah. We're ready, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that chat go. That's a chat that's ready. ASMR for free? What can I say? I spoiled you guys, okay? Let me get my headphones. 
Let me take the sunglasses off my head that I'm wearing indoors and it's dark outside. Makes no sense. Doesn't Straub also do ASMR? Absolutely, my wife, darling Straub, does amazing ASMR. She's the best ASMR in the world. You heard that from me, folks. All right, let's start this vidya. So, right. and we'll, we'll, we'll pop this up real quick because this is something that's been kind of, to me, the fact you, like, this is, to me, this is one of the first legal fuck-ups. Why would you post this publicly? This as a practice. You never fucking do this. So he's referring to the initial Niji Sanji termination post from uh, from them about Selene announcing her termination and the reasons for it. And he's just outright saying, as someone who is from corporate, the corporate world, this is a terrible, terrible decision right off the bat. So that does kind of make you think because in the VTubing culture, especially with agencies, it's so common to have termination announcements, including the actual specific reasons for it too, which you don't really see in other places because you're just kind of opening yourself up to a lot of issues for no reason. I mean, that that's kind of the thing. Now they've created an expectation among fans, like companies like Niji Sanji, that you're going to get not only a public announcement of a termination, but you're going to get reasons for it too. I don't know. I thought about doing ASMR once while I was just going to turn on my mic way down and talk normally. I mean, that works. That That's pretty much ASMR right there. For him to say this as a brand new eye in this kind of culture too. Yeah, that's the important thing. As someone who's completely new, not interested in any sort of a way, he's not a fan. Well, he might be now, but he wasn't a fan of Niji Sanji or Doki Bird or any of these parties. And now he's got an impartial view. My first time seeing live after watching too much YouTube videos. Yo, welcome to the stream. You can never watch too many red videos. Right, it's a horrible practice. To publicly post a termination notice is inviting a legal nightmare. As corporate counsel, like, you know, I, I, people know me from doing, uh, representing special districts as well. You know, I did that when I was younger, when I was uh, younger, as a younger attorney in Florida, representing Reedy Creek, which is why I covered the Disney issues. We would never post a notice of contract termination publicly this this is insane this goes to her lawyer this goes to her right it's kind of funny like we're we're sitting in our own little like world over here where we think all of these things are very just normal because we're used to them being normal right like oh it's just a termination announcement from a, a vtubing agency that's how things go right but you have someone who's from the field who's like what are they doing this is crazy this is absolutely crazy. This is a crazy thing to do. Yo, DJ, thank you for the egg on head redeem and the streak. The stream streak. Yeah. I don't know. It, it kind of opens us up to uh, how how much of an island we all are on. And, and also, this is also like clashing cultures, too. We're dealing with Japanese culture. It's not always the same. It doesn't. Tr everything doesn't translate over. Maybe this is the norm over there, but... When you think about the corporate world, people typically aren't uh, getting a public termination announcement when they do something bad. You don't really hear all these details like we do with these agency VTubers. Yo, and Max, thank you so much for the big tier one for three months saying, hello, Rev. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing very good. And I'm doing even better because I'm here hanging with you guys. That's right. Wholesome chungus. Right. That's about it. Right. And I'm not, once again, not an expert, not a Japanese lawyer. Right. But... But we're, uh, my, I think my experience as an attorney in general, and also somebody who has interacted a lot with attorneys in Japan uh, as well, right, makes me a little bit more qualified than at least most folks in America and most of the standard drama commenters on the internet. That, did he just call us out, ladies and gentlemen? Did he just say he's more qualified than some of the commentators on the internet. How dare you? Okay, he's definitely more qualified. He's absolutely more qualified. And I, I, I think his opinion on this matter is significantly more important than my opinion or anyone else talking about this situation. You know, the typical VTuber news and drama channels. Like, this is way more valuable. That's why I wanted to stream this today and share this and hear what he has to say because 
he knows more than us. He doesn't need to know the ins and out, okay? Like, I can know, like, uh, some of the, the the degenerate details of some of these VTubers involved and nitpicky tiny little details about their careers and their online presence, but that doesn't really matter when we're talking about legal documents, you know? As a credentialed individual, that's right. Yo, 13, what's good? Welcome back, dude. Hope we're doing well. Sarcasm alert. Listen, me never. So this notice, if we pull this up, they got into just a lot of stuff where they shouldn't have uh, got into it in terms of, okay, she violated these activity rules, right? These uh, alleged activity rules. Let me kind of... Epsilon says that can't help it that Niji Sanji PR team is run by four rats in a trench coat. <laughs> it, it's also like we just mentioned, like Greater just mentioned, it's the problem. It's run by it's run by Japanese folks that do not understand the perception of this, particularly in the English speaking world. That's also very true. So in case you guys aren't aware, the Japanese side of the Niji Sanji fan base largely they don't give a shit about this situation. They really don't care that much about the Selen termination and the fallout involving everything else that stemmed from it. They haven't cared that much. And I think it is a difference in cultures. And also it's different when you're dealing with a VTuber that isn't a branch under a language you don't speak. Yeah, and they defend uh, corporate. Yeah, I mean, they do that too, more than the English side. That That is definitely true. That's not like making a big assumption. But yeah... Uh, it is very different, the reaction on the Japanese side. And that might be reflected in how they handle things legally. Maybe they just thought like, oh, well, you know, this might not upset Japanese fans. And they assume it's the same with English speaking fans. But that clearly is not the case because people, the general consensus is against Niji Sanji. That is not uh, a bold thing to say. The general consensus is that Niji Sanji has been fucking up and they look really bad recently. Right. And also that doing doing these statements they have to be really really carefully thought through and you cannot put information like this out here and, and, and just expect no everybody to take it and it to be okay right that's not gonna happen what they're saying here is okay we terminated selling and i am gonna summarize due to breaches of essentially their rules right of their policies and that would amount to breach of contract now that is something I'm generally familiar because breach of contract is is a uh, is fairly international, right? The rules regarding a lot of other different types of law, criminal law, uh, even certain types of civil law are different. But breach of contract is actually one of the things that's pretty international. And yeah, I mean, I don't think you need to be a lawyer to understand that, like, if your contract says one thing, or you can't do a certain thing, and you do that thing you're not supposed to do, or you break the rule, or whatever you you sign to you could be terminated. I mean, that's not like a big shocking thing. That's why this should have been very simple. But the problem is, I don't know if he gets into this, but the rule that they cite for Selene and her termination that has to do with the sharing of company information, things like that, they later come out and say the exact opposite when talking about the three livers who came out and made the joint statement. That was um, Alira, Vox, and Ike. And they said, well, basically, livers can talk about anything that uh, Niji Sanji in any color says. They can share that information, even if we can't. But that's the reason that they terminated Selen. And also, adding on to that, the damage caused to the company. Who caused more damage to the company in this situation? Selen, the terminated VTuber? Or was it the, the joint statement by the three, the three stooges over here? Like, which one caused more damage? I think we all know which one caused more damage. Crazy. To them, this whole situation is probably just like overworked animators slash mangakas. They see it way more than we do. Very true. It's very true. And just so you guys know, because one of the big issues is venue, 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 venue. With breach of contract, typically you look at where the defendant's headquarters is, where their place of business is. And Canada. also if it's stipulated in the contract or stipulated anywhere else or wherever the work is primarily taking place, which clearly would be Japan. So, oh, well. When I'm thinking of, I mean, isn't Selene from Canada? Or was she, she was still in Canada during all this, right? Yes. Yeah, in terms of venue, of where all these contracts are made, it's obviously Japan. That's where Niji Sanji is stationed. But Canada is where she's from. So I wonder how that plays out. Like, he knows more than any of us, so...
Salon is the plaintiff? Yeah. Well, I mean, she's not the plaintiff. There's no there's no legal proceedings right now. No, Australia's made up right. Right. Yeah. Degen, you're made up, dude. You and your your goofy country. It's all made up. She's Canadian. Sorry, I'm gonna have to side with Niji now. Oh god. Those Canadians, those those people up north, how could they? How could they? Uh, hello, Rev. Uh, a few hours ago, Yuga and Aika, VTubers from WAC, to reveal that they've been victims of workplace sexual and moral harassment. I don't know about any of that right now, but that, I'll definitely check into that because we all know there's a lot going on with WAC, that's, that's for sure. But thank you for sharing that. For the breach of contract claim, the venue would, would definitely be Japan. So, Gator, does that make sense to you? Does that, does that analysis make sense to you? Right, because it's a it's a Japanese company, and the contract is ostensibly a contract with a Japanese company. The proper venue would be Japan in terms of anything regarding uh, employment. Yes, regarding employment, right? So specifically regarding employment. So they uh, they have this you know general uh, activity rules which they say uh, damage to the reputation or credibility of third parties. Real quick, this is a, this is Japanese law here. So this bit here where they talk about damage to the reputation or credibility of third parties. This is something you need to pay a very close attention to whenever you analyze Japanese issues. And this is something a lot of people get wrong. The defamation laws, the copyright laws, mm -hmm. they go Especially way, those. way further in Japan than the U.S. That is something I have just casually observed. And anyone else who's been around, not just VTubing and anime and things like that, but if you've looked at Japanese culture, how they handle things like defamation, I mean, those a lot of those things are crimes. It's not just a civil issue. I mean, it's it's a literal crime. So they're, they take these things much more seriously. They're very strict about defamation. And also when it comes to things like copyright, is this the case with Nintendo? I mean, that's why Nintendo feels so privy to take down videos left and right because their country's laws favor them. They're supported by their country's laws in Japan. But for a lot of people in the West, especially in America, that's not reflective of how things like copyright and fair use are situated. So that's why we're so like dumbfounded when we see these, these Japanese companies striking down videos and doing things like that because that's just not how it is over in Japan. They have a different system. It's way more strict. And that's the way it is. I mean, think about the Toei animation situation with uh, Totally Not Mark. People were flabbergasted by the fact that he had so many videos struck down by Toei animation, his One Piece videos. Because to, to us, it was just like, oh, that's fair use. He's using fair use. Clear and cut. But to the Japanese companies, no, that's not a thing for them. And they have the right to take those down. Luckily, Rare YouTube W, they said in situations like that with law from different parts of the world or different countries, they basically made a middle ground and they kind of did a, a lighter fair use than what we're typically used to seeing, but it was enough to save a lot of Totally Not Mark's videos. Thank God. It should have been all of them, honestly. Defamation laws in Japan are wild. I'd be completely fucked if I had them down there. Yeah, I, I, everyone would be fucked. I don't know if I'd be able to react to like any of this stuff, by the way. Salon is a uh, citizen of Canada living somewhere in British Columbia. BC, uh, privacy laws, last time I looked at it, would be a par, if not stricter than Washington State's own HIPAA laws. That's another thing because medical information was shared, allegedly, in, in these private documents that were shared around Niji Sanji, which would be a whole nother situation. Yo, Fate, what's good, man? Saying uh, good night, everyone. Yeah, time zones. Do you remember how I said uh, you'll return to even more trauma? Dude, it's worse. Also, today's video is the, the Brittany Venti situation. I know you're interested in that. I finally got around to doing that one. We're taking a, a daily break, just one day, a one day break from the Niji Sanji stuff on the main channel. It, we had to take one day, okay? It's been too much. And thank you for the egg on head, Redeem, by the way. But let's continue. There are moral rights to IP that do not exist in the U.S., there are protections that go further than that that allow for pretty severe damages uh, if you do anything without the permission of somebody who might you might need to get the permission of. For example, famously, right, if you were doing a walking stream and there was somebody in the walking stream, you know, where you're going down the street with a camera and somebody objected to that, 
you would have to remedy that pretty quickly. Or- I, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that before. Especially like when we talked about, oh yeah, I'll check that in the DMs, Fab. I'm sorry I didn't see that. I'll check that out after stream. But um, here's the thing, like, if you remember the uh, the Vice News documentary on on the manga industry, a lot of people like myself were up at arms because, besides the fact it was a smear campaign, the journalist Hanako, Hanako Montgomery, she was filming inside of businesses and filming other people without their permission. And that was causing a lot of issues and, and complaints from people because that's illegal in Japan. And also, like he just said, if you film people's faces and they object to it, you have to take that shit down. You could get in trouble. And you luckily will get in trouble. Yo, JBF and player, welcome to the stream. Can I eat your glasses, father? No, these are mine. You have to get your own glasses. Sorry. I'm generous, not that generous. Or instantly. Which is why a lot of times it's just better to blow the faces. Because if somebody was to object to that or have a problem with that, you're in deep trouble in Japan. So understand that reputation, credibility, that language is is much more powerful than it might be on the u.s side or involve socially condemned behavior as a company we are confident that in order to deliver content for our fans to enjoy in the long term and to create an environment where our affiliated livers can safely perform their activities with the support of fans and stakeholders it is essential for both our livers and company to unite that's a very japanese concept there the social who's upsetting the social orders these standards are absolutely crazy. We, we've talked about this before. It's not just with uh, Niji Sanji. You know, think about some of the uh, the other Japanese gaming companies who have these outrageous standards about moral order and things like that, social order. Those things are terrifying, dude. That can mean anything. It's so backwards. He tore into the message of message from Niji Sanji. Yeah, he went hard on that one. I did see a, a good part of that. Konami, yes. Yep. Yo, Nikolov, what's good? Nice five stream streak, my dude. Good to see you back. Merch idea? I don't know about that. My Twitter thread about the uh, what articles Montgomery writes was better journalism. Dude, I remember sharing that in my video. It was so much better than anything she's ever done. Literally. Yep. Right, which which they might as well say employees, right? But the livers mean specifically the VTuber talent employees. So right. they have to unite and adhere to the compliance rules. Very Japanese framing there. Despite our efforts to uphold these rules, Selen repeatedly violated the activity rules since joining Niji Sanji going all the way back to 2021. So they're trying to document the whole thing. There have been ongoing reports about the inappropriate behavior by Selen Tatsuki throughout her time as an and Niji Sanji Liver, we've been addressing these concerns. And this is just page one, we'll go to page two. But even here, guys, what they've said is already pretty defamatory if it's not true. Damn. So he's saying here that what we're looking at is possibly defamatory as well. Seven messages saying, I need to eat your glasses. How about you eat this ban, bro? You're corny and you're boring. Goodbye. Jeez Louise. You know, getting banned in my stream, that is a tough thing. Like, you can say the most annoying shit, but like, I I tend to just ignore it or tolerate because I'm just used to these things. But damn, like, it's not even enjoyable. Just annoying. I wonder if Doki Bird's lawyer will over Niji Sanji for her former model. I doubt they're going to try to take... I feel like she doesn't want the model at this point, even if she could have it, you know? Yo, thank you for the uh, egg on head. But it seems like if we talk about infringement on third-party property rights, my understanding, Gator, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that she, in reality, did not violate anybody's copyright or IP laws, that, that she had permissions for everything that she did. And that's what seems like the case when we were looking at these things, when the song was initially privated on her stream, she went out and confirmed that she had permission from all the music related parties. And that was not really addressed by Niji Sanji. Yo, Kaka TV, thank you for the big raid. Yo, welcome Raiders. We're just sitting here reading some 
some Niji Sanji related drama. We're catching up on this video. We have a lawyer going over the Niji Sanji situation, giving some actual qualified advice as to some of the documents, which has been uh, very helpful. But I hope your stream went well. Uh, welcome in, guys. Welcome in. Yo, and by the way, also, uh, didn't want to miss that there. Yo, Caliphus, thank you for uh, continuing the sub you got gifted from Anonymous. Yo, I appreciate that very much. And yo, Pokemon Messiah, what's good? Yeah, welcome in, Raiders. She she even reached out to the original author of the song that she used, Lily Pichu, and she got did. her explicit permission and was actually working behind the scenes trying to get management to just kind of give the okay and reach out to these people. They actually, Lily Pichu, I have a tweet from like 2020 or 2021 where she says that explicitly people have the right to remix her music. Like it was even before she got the actual personal okay. She had all of the parties involved for the music, but as we find out later, it had to do with a few frames containing some ex-livers. It was Nina and uh, Mr. Rios, I believe, who were the two former talents featured in like a frame of the music video. And apparently they needed the permission of that or some other parties related to them. And that was just like a deal breaker. They, they couldn't find a way to get permission. And in my opinion, for a big company like Niji Sanji, they should be able to get permission and get it quick. Like, I'm sorry. They didn't do it. So on her own behalf, she went and talked to these people and got the permission to use all of the assets, to use all of the art, to use the song. Yeah, so she had that permission. Uh, there was no actual infringement upon the rights of other livers or anybody in general, right? Third parties, right? So that could be random people. And look, I understand like workflow is something that was a debate. I believe there was a debate about how long it took them to get back. And I know some people, and, and once again, I'm trying to be objective here, you know, and, and provide a, a pretty level-headed analysis. Some people were, I think, mad Gator that the permissions, the management permissions for posting the video were taking too long. I think uh, it was something like 41 hours that they essentially didn't respond to her. So she just posted it. To be honest with you guys, look, I've worked in a corporate environment and I've done a lot of things that should have taken 10 minutes and they took a week. So I don't want to say in terms of an internal workflow of a company that that whether that's reasonable or unreasonable. And, you know, we'd have to look at her contract as to what they would stipulate and like how fast they would get back, which probably once again, people don't have a contract lawyer looking over that when they sign. This is yeah, that's pretty interesting because also it's different. I mean, this is VTubing. Like, this isn't like a, a typical corporate environment. Yo, Risto, my man, thank you so much for the tier three. The tier three for 22 months. I appreciate that very much, man. I hope you're doing well today. I appreciate the continued support. The Giga Chad tier three. That's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Niji, basically, uh, this liver is our golden goose. So we will abuse her over any perceived diversion from perfect obedience. This is so dumb, especially in the sphere of actors, idols, etc., when a person matters, imagine if someone did this to Jim Carrey just out of corporate pettiness. It's so true. Like, she was not only someone who was a big revenue generator for them, but she was beloved in the VTubing scene. She was seen as, like, a leader and someone who was doing really good for their company as a whole, including making a lot of events, international tournaments and things like that and trying to support artists in her community. And every time she tried to do anything, they shut her down. It wasn't like they were slapping her on the wrist for like actual bad shit she was doing. A lot of it was she was trying to go above and beyond for her community and Niji Sanji was either slow or getting in the way. And she took things upon herself. Optics, exactly. The optics have been bad for years involving Niji Sanji's treatment of Selen. All the way back to the art competition, the tournaments, like I said. It wasn't just this termination. It's part of the unequal power between an employee and a company. This is something that you would want up, a lawyer looking at and saying, no, if I post something, you should have to approve this within 24 hours. Um, Chad's bringing up a good point too, that you know she got permission from Lily Pichu back in 2022. This was a, it's not like this project was something she came up with spur of the moment and mm -hmm, yeah. it was done really quickly and then just like instantly released. It was something that was a long-term project that she had that's planned. that's a good point that i didn't really think of so like a lot of people are harping on like oh she had x amount of time 
between when she asked for the final permissions versus when she posted it and just went ahead and did it. But also there should be a time period at which they should say like 24 hours after you post it, we need to give you a decision, yes or no, or get it done. Or we'll try to get it done within a period. And if not, if there's an issue, then something. It was like, oh, well, it's it's up and we don't have permissions. Just shut it down now, immediately. Seek Zion. Zion, uh, Sayu was right. We all know this now. Uh, looking back, everyone knows uh, Sayu was right about the culture at, at Niji Sanji. Everyone said she was wrong. Everyone was attacking her and saying she wanted attention after she was terminated. But she was right. And a lot of people look really stupid. And uh, that, that was something I talked about on the alt channel. Pretty... Uh, Pretty in depth about a week or two ago if you guys ever want to check that out and for at least a year and you know as we kind of go into more detail about other things that have been going on yeah. we see that this is a pattern of behavior it wasn't like she just you know this was the this was the first time that management ghosted her and she kind of had to take things into her own hands this this is a pattern of behavior which will not play in niji sanji's favor and let me point this out here too, guys, just because like, if I'm, you know, if I comment on something, I'm like, it's not legal, that doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it moral. It doesn't make it ethical. And once again, the allegation that Niji Sanji is a black company, which for those that don't know, black company is a very specific term in Japan for a company that violates Japanese labor standards, that overworks you, that pushes you, that engages in workplace bullying or harassment, which we were talking about this before the show. Uh, I was talking about this with Gator before the show. In Japan, and also I, I was in Korea as well, it, it tends to be more common even in regular workplaces where there's a dynamic of power where it's like you do this or else, right? Or you do this mm -hmm. or, you know, we will do X, right? You know, it's like you do this or we will terminate your visa, right? So obviously <laughs> some VTubers are probably in Japan. Yeah. Maybe they're on a work visa. You know, we'll terminate your work visa, right? We yeah, if you got your work visa, speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a little off topic, but Straub showed me something. Apparently in Japan, they're making content creator visas for up to six months, where if you're a content creator and you make X amount of money, which I'm over the threshold, you can get a free visa for up to six months to Japan. And you get free travel throughout the country. Do I, do I pack my shit? And me and the wife go to Japan? Like, what the hell? It was crazy. Apparently, it's some big initiative that they're doing for content creators to bring them over to Japan. I don't really know if I would, like, do anything special. I would just make videos the same way, but I'd be in Japan. So clearly, if I was making videos out of Japan, I'd have more credibility on anything involving anime or stuff like that, right? And that's how this works, right, guys? Of course. Wait, wait, wait a second. What is this? First time chat. Why do you have eggs? Why do I? Chat. Why do I have eggs? Can you answer this question? Thank you for the redeem, DJ. Excuse me. You have to understand this community. That feels like it can be exploited so easily, especially after all the shit that happened with that guy who made videos harassing people. A lot of this is just very sussy, but look at those eggs. Look at those eggs, and thank you for the redeem again. Let's let's add that egg on. Beautiful. Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. The eggs are looking good. They're looking good. You still need to be employed in Japan in order to take advantage of the visa. I mean, I'm employed as a content creator, right? Simple as. Self-employed. I don't know how any of that stuff works. I'm, I'm going to be real. I have no clue. Exceptional. We will, you know, punish you. We will destroy your reputation. We will not pay you, right? Whatever the thing is that they're threatening to do, right? They may do that, right? As a company. And the worse you go, it's more of a sliding scale, right? All companies in Japan are pretty hard to work with, but a black company is the worst. What is becoming more clear is Niji Sanji is on definitely pushing towards one side of this equation. Even if damn, definitely pushing towards one. Yo, Katroska with the tier one. Cat, thank you very much for the tier one saying, ew, it's Rev. Perfect first time message. You get away with that. You get one of those because you subbed. You get one of those. That's right. 
Thank you very much for the tier one. I appreciate it. And the Agon head from Koto, if I appreciate what it. What they're doing is not necessarily illegal, right? So for example, the workflow, that might that itself, the approval itself may not have been a legal breach of contract, but it doesn't make it a good thing, right? That's a, that's in fact, right. in fact, it might be a tactic used to control her, like right. which and is which is fucked up, by the way. And I'll be very clear about that. It's fucked up. It's extremely fucked up, but might not necessarily be illegal. Um, right. These actions led to various misunderstandings that damaged the reputation of any color Nijisan Yen. In an effort to calm the situation, we sought to either publicly disclose the reasons for making it private or have Selen disclose them herself. While being mindful of her physical and mental health. So this is before she's really commented on that. So they're, they're just even saying something like that is an implication that it like there, there might be an issue there. And that's a dangerous implication to put in any document. Uh, I think, right. And, and this... You know, Literally, like, again, I don't think you need to be an expert. And he picks up on this very quickly throughout all of his commentary on this. Like, their lawyer seems so woefully unprepared for any of this. It's like, it seems like it's their first rodeo. And they just were not prepared, not only for this set of law, but also the reception of how a, do a document like this would be perceived by a Western audience. It's really just, it, it's kind of baffling. And he says, like, a lot of this stuff is just pure incompetence. Pure incompetence. I have to go, unfortunately. I'll see all you red, red wings later. Yo, enjoy the rest of your day, Motley Parker. Revlings. That's the name, by the way, in case you're new around here. We are the Revlings. And there, there, there's Revling in the chat. The one that started it all. There you go. Beautiful. This reminds me of the stuff that happened to Robin Williams when he worked for Disney. That's a whole nother arc. Damn, that's the next set of drama. Nah, we kind of missed that one. The, the door might have closed on that one. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, again, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see Tazami uh, having the whole bookcase thrown at him as well as management, whether it be six months or six years from now. Yeah, that's another thing people have raised. Um, if maybe they go after the, the CEO to try to change direction and save face. That's an extreme thing, but I, I don't know. With the way things have been going, especially in the eyes of shareholders. Yeah, also eggheads. Yes, if you're a sub, you're an egghead. You start off as a follower, you're a revling. Then when you sub, you become an egghead. But you don't lose the revling status. You gain an additional status which is an egg head. Okay. These are all very important things to understand and also achieve. Like you might be many things in life. You might be a student. You might be a, a, a doctor or a lawyer, but are you an egg head? The answer to that is really important. Okay. It really determines where you're at on the social ladder. Exactly. <laughs> How's your Azur Lane account going? It's going nowhere. This stupid fucking Niji Sanji stuff. Uh, you know, we started playing uh, Azur Lane about two weeks ago, and this just ruined everything, man. This is all I've been doing. I literally haven't been able to play Azur Lane. I haven't played like any WoW. I'm supposed to play Pal World. It's all a bunch of BS, man. But like, realistically, what else are we supposed to be doing right now? I mean, this is like the biggest story that's happened in the VTubing scene, arguably ever. I've never seen the reaction to this situation ever before. Let's just go back to Nekopara. That's always an option, of course. And Fall Guys as well. But Fall Guys is something I was, I was thinking, hear me out, chat. We could do some, like, if we have another, like, drama stream, which I'm sure we're going to in the next week, maybe play some Fall Guys afterwards. That could be fun. Marbles? We haven't even made, we haven't played much Marbles either. It's just been covering drama over and over again. And, you know, we act like we're surprised. I am a fucking drama channel, aren't I? Just kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. This also um, runs afoul of Canadian law here because uh, the Canadian law that governs protected health information and personal information is PIPEDA. Some people in chat may be familiar with the U.S. law HIPAA, but that specifically covers 
protected health information in terms of the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. With Capeta, yes. it's even more stringent in Canada because it's not just protected health information. It's also like your address, loans mm. that you have, that's protected information. Um, anything about you personally, so like your age, mental status, disabilities. And it sounds like those things, like for example, some of her diagnoses were shared in this, well, it was in the legal document that was not supposed to be shared with anyone other than the Niji Sanji lawyers that all of a sudden people like Vox, Alira, and Ike, at the very least, were shown. Arguably, I think it's it's very easy to think that this document was shared with more people than just that. But that's the interesting turn. How does this deal with health laws that are designed to protect this information from being shared with parties that you haven't consented to. And that's another arc in this that I hope she's pursuing because honestly, that's fucked up. I wonder if there's a course, a uh, court case battle between Doki bird and Niji Sanji. As far as we know, there's no court case yet. There might be in the future. We don't know that yet. We're having drama. That's right. Yo rocket. Welcome back. You're right. The ki kind of a drama queen, me, a drama queen. Maybe. Maybe. I was just watching that video. Yeah, there's been a lot of great streams coming out of uh, Legal Mindset over this situation. A lot to digest. I'm glad there's a little clip compilation like this. But this is like the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more that uh, he talks about. But let's uh, let's keep going. Even, even simple things like... Um, um, oh, yeah. So like your employment history. Thank you for that. The head pad. That's really? Another, that's another thing they can't... Yeah, they can't disclose stuff like that. Anything yeah, so, that could so, personally identify you cannot be disclosed without your authorization. And and that's a big deal, guys. You got to understand. I know that we we have our common conception of these things and they we kind of romanticize these laws, but that's not exactly how they work, right? Um, but obviously Canada is more stringent. So when I think about claims and I think about Canada, that specifically bringing the privacy, the information privacy, that could be brought in Canada. And I think that's some of the strongest, some of the strongest claims, the ones that can be brought in Canada rather than in Japan, because that is a Canada specific thing. So the appropriate venue for that would be Canada because she's yeah. a Canadian uh, citizen, right? She's or, a Canadian citizen. Yeah. So that, that's the, uh, the important difference. So when we were talking about venue earlier, when we were talking about the contract related stuff, the venue is Japan, but when it comes to the health and privacy related things involving things that were disclosed that, you know, involve Doki Birds, let's say her health and some of her diagnosis and things like that. The venue would be Canada, which has very strict laws when, or, when it comes to things like that. And honestly, strict laws in the US and I guess Canada's even more strict. So at this point, uh, if she brings some sort of suit in Canada, that would be very interesting. Niji Sanji shoots them in the foot. Effing drama tubers. Yeah, it's us. We did this. Uh, it's our fault. Damn it. I mean, Rev does have his egg crown at the moment, so Queen is not too off the mark. Listen, you're not wrong, okay? You're not wrong. Can attest privacy is huge here. That's right. I remember you are from Canada. Yo, Mari, thank you very much for the egg on head redeem. By the way, you see the head pats going on? This is what we call scrambled eggs, ladies and gentlemen. Very important. And, and her yeah. information is in Canada. It's in Canada, right? That makes this a claim. So you can bring both claims. You can bring in Canada a privacy claim, and in Japan, you could do the employment and you know employment breach of contract, right? Which once again, it's going to be an uphill battle in Japan just because you're fighting against a Japanese company, right, with like, huge resources. But in Canada, you might have a way better time and a way easier time uh, sealing the deal regarding that information. In but here's the other thing: a lot of people aren't really uh, thinking about too much. I think the average person how much all of this would cost the legal fees would be absolutely crazy no matter what she's trying to do an international case an international case like this brother legal time mental stamina the amount of stress too people don't really realize how long 
these things will drag out. It's typically years. An international suit like this is years. I've seen other YouTubers go through stuff like this, even in the most blatant cases where it's like very obvious who was in the wrong. The legal proceedings and in, in the entire path might take two years just to get a very obvious conclusion. It's just the way things work. It's just the way things work. Yeah, I've heard 500,000. I've heard 100K minimum. I've heard a lot of things, but I think anyone can assume that it's definitely, it's definitely gonna be very expensive. And even someone like Doki Bird, who's doing really well, and can probably get a very big um, kind of crowd crowdfunding situation. It's still like, you have to think about, is this worth the money, the stress, and all of this at the end of the day, just to say I won? Maybe it is. Who knows? Maybe maybe someone like Doki Bird, this is important to them personally. And they want to feel like they were vindicated or they got justice in this situation. So who knows? She just wants to let it go, doesn't she? I mean, that that kind of goes along with, with that. I mean, there's been no legal proceeding, proceedings whatsoever. I feel like the only way she would do that is if she was literally forced because Niji Sanji keeps upping the ante and, and making more things public. That's the only way. The lawyer estimates easy 500k and would involve her name coming out, meaning no privacy. I mean, that's the other thing. A lot of a lot of YouTubers come out and are like, I'm going to sue X, Y, and Z. But like, dude, you realize to sue people, you have to give over all of your legal information and make it public. Like, are you sure about that? A lot of people don't know things like that. Canada against Nietzsche Sanji. By the way, once again, this is the law, not morality. Was Is it right to share people's private uh information no not at all i think morally it's it's bankrupt right but we're talking about the law here. then here's the line was being harassed by other of other affiliated livers due to mismanagement while refusing to acknowledge her responsibility for violating the activity so this one here i think is particularly troublesome because it brings in the other livers biggest mistake of the initial termination announcement they should have just refuted her claim. They should have just said, she claimed there was harassment, there was none. Well, well okay, let me let me back up. The right thing to do was to not say anything or to uh, make sure this didn't happen in the first place by actually preventing bullying and things like that and treating it seriously from the jump. But the fact that they named these livers as the harassers and didn't name them was the biggest mistake in that initial termination document. Biggest mistake. Because then it started a witch hunt. Number number one, in many people's eyes, that confirmed that there was bullying. And then people started guessing, well, who's the bully? And they started guessing by unsubbing to a bunch of EN livers. Because they just didn't have any reason to uh, pin it down to a certain person. Because they didn't have an actual name. Rev doing VTuber News ASMR. I gotta get paid for that. I wouldn't do that for free. I only do the ASMR when I'm getting a little hyped up, Okay. Typically when that happens. Alira threw Millie name out too in the video. Yeah, she did. She name dropped Millie for no reason. None. No reason at all. She just name dropped her and involved her. When people are already trying to come up with ways to connect her to this situation. I think if you unsubbed everyone regardless of who it is because the biggest culprit is still... Yeah, a lot of people unsubbed from these livers because... They're dissatisfied with Niji Sanji as a company and they want to stay away and uh, basically uh, eject themselves from this whole situation. They, want to, they don't want to support anyone in the company because supporting any of these livers is supporting the company. So like I understand it's not all just witch hunting and trying to figure out who the bullies are. A lot of people just don't like Niji Sanji EN and what, what's been going on with the company as a whole. Yeah. Right. Right. So the other livers are now brought in here because the harassment is keyed to the other livers. If this is in tr untrue, this is a extreme damage to those other livers. In fact, I would say those other livers in some cases might even have claims against uh, Niji Sanji themselves just because they've been pointed to. Oh, my God. As the, the, the problem here, really, the issue seems to have been from management. Right, they, they really have- So did you hear that? Basically he was saying that Niji Sanji might have opened themselves up to suits 
from their own livers because basically they got thrown out as a meat shield in that initial termination announcement. And their words, naming these livers as the bullies, hurt them personally. It hurt their channels, it hurt their livelihood, it hurt their image. That's bad, dude. And again, will they actually do that? I don't know. I highly doubt it. I mean, these people have been going to bat for Niji Sanji, these livers, so I doubt they would turn around and sue, but it's pretty messed up, and it's not a good look. It makes their 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 um their lawyers over at Niji Sanji and the people who wrote this document look even more incompetent. Uh well, you'd expect protection from being in an agency. The agency turns on them. Yeah, they use them as meat shields, threw them out as a distraction. Not good. I mean, why would you want to be in a company like that that uses you to help themselves, help their own image of their management? I want to be in a timeline where every liver sues Niji and Niji bankrupts so much it sells the golden plates. Yeah, I mean, speaking of uh, uh, plates, I, I still need my 100K subscriber plaque. I'm going to bring it up every time it happens. Still don't have it. I hit 100K on YouTube four years ago. Still don't have it, dude. The initial reason was because of, uh, they said I had reused content. This was after I already uh, transitioned to commentary instead of memes and stuff. And they've just held down basically their catch-all. Uh, we hold it within our rights to give out our, uh, our plaques and to withhold them for whatever reason we want. And that's all I get nowadays. And I've just given up. Niji Sanji probably hijacked his YouTube play button. They did. They're involved. They got the assassins. Then we have to get your other channel to 100k. Yo, that's the play right there. The alt channel is, guys, the alt channel is going fucking crazy, by the way. In fact, I might be uploading this video, this VOD, onto the alt channel, quite frankly. And if uh, you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hello. But uh, basically, the alt channel is popping off like crazy. We've been very active. And I've gained like 15,000 subs on that channel in the last like month or two. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So maybe we hit 100K on the alt channel and they give us a plaque from that one. Because that, that, that channel is clean. That channel is very clean right now. So yeah. Do ASMR with Straub and maybe your play button will arrive. We got her play button right behind me. It's sitting there. And I'm very happy for her. But we should have matching plaques. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Shen, welcome to the stream. Egghead, that's right. Guys, where are my eggheads at? Where are my subs at? That's right. The eggheads, report for duty. Love your stuff, Rev. Have a great day slash night. You too. I'm glad you like the content. I got in your channel because of Asmongold. Very nice, dude. I think with... I really enjoy the Asmongold reactions because I think a lot of people who watch Asmongold... Would enjoy my content if they gave it a chance. We all know it's just like my content's a little different, a little weird to some people, and that's okay. I get it. But uh, definitely, uh, when people give it a chance, they, they tend to realize I probably have very similar viewpoints than they do. You know what I mean? But yo, Karu with another 1,500 bits saying, I have to admit uh, that I watch your channel through uh, Prozzy, but here, take the support instead. Yo, I appreciate that very, very much, Car. Thank you for the 1,500 bits. Yo, and Natalie, what's good? Thank you so much for the raid. I appreciate that very much. I hope your stream went very well. We're just here talking about some uh, some Niji Sanji drama. A lawyer was reacting to some of the legal doc or some of the public documents, and we've just been listening. We're about to close out maybe in like 10-ish minutes, but I appreciate the raid, and we'll pass you on to someone else pretty soon. Yeah, welcome in, Raiders. And again, Karu, thank you so much for the 1,500 bits. I really do appreciate that. That is very, very kind of you. All of you are too kind to me. But yeah, let's let's finish this off here. Had no, uh, they didn't have to put that in there, but yeah. they did. Yeah, they just they just threw that out there. You're, you're literally snitching on yourself. No marbles? Nah, we don't have time. Uh, me and Straub have a event to go to. I'm already kind of pushing it with the time here, but... Uh, I definitely was uh, in the mood to stream and hang out with you guys for a little bit. Can't place the egg. We're running out of space. We're running out of space. Had no idea you had a Twitch. Yo, well, welcome in. 
a lot of people don't know I have a Twitch, even though my Twitch name is above my head in every single video. But clearly, that's a very common thing uh, thing because a lot of people don't don't know that who are longtime viewers. When an attorney says you self-reported, well, they did self-report. They said there's bullies within the company, and then they don't name them. They self-reported that there's bullies in the company. They didn't deny it in the initial document. It was just so terrible. I redeemed an egg. Here, I might have done it, but I'll give you another one. I'm feeling in a very generous mood. Here it is. Bam. More eggs. You're welcome. Egg him? Yes. There you go.